linked into your Word 2007. So for example, if I come over here to insert, and I just simply click on chart, it says, all right, you want to insert a chart? You bet. So I click on it. It's then going to give me a whole bunch of options on how this is going to be. Now, let me just give you a little bit of background. The Excel worksheet that you're going to see, if you're not familiar with Excel or spreadsheets, highly recommend that you listen to my good friend Emily Berry's training on the CBT Nuggets for Emily, uh, Excel 2007. Great stuff if you really want to learn about data points, data series, column heads, and things like that. We're going to see some of that. Just understand it's beyond the scope of this video series to really get into how Excel operates and manipulates uh, data. Okay, So instead, we get the fun part here in Word, I like to say. We get to pick the type of chart that we want to use. Look at all these charts. Again, anything you can think of pretty much. Typically though you're going to use something like a column chart. So let's, we'll stick with the basic column like clustered column. We'll show you how you can change the look and feel of your chart once you get the data set the way that you want. Whether you want to change it over to a line chart, a uh, pie chart, or something like that. So we'll stick with the standard columns. We'll click OK and uh, the nice thing is, is you'll notice a couple of things. Now I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put this kind of next to each other right here, but in the future I'll have them kind of overlap each other here on the screen so we'll move back and forth. Look, they've already created a nice new handy dandy chart for me with just some blank information. Categories, an XY chart, here's your series, one, two, three, uh, and then here's the categories within those series and here's the data. It does give you some instructions on how to resize the chart data range and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and place it right over my word. Now down here in my bottom on my uh, my taskbar, you can go ahead and just sl select over. We'll come back over here to my document two, which is this, and then you can move back here. So we'll be clicking down here, and I'll try to, and I hope I remember to tell you when I'm switching down here to the to the previous. They're both separate, but notice it calls it the chart in Microsoft Office Word. That's the name of this little spreadsheet that you have here. So what you can do, obviously, is make any changes. Right now it's just reflecting all of the information that's now back here on your uh, Microsoft Excel. So if you want to make any changes, all you need to do is come over here and you can change the name, like Series 1. Well, we can change it to something else. We could say something like this is, a, you know, a, a clarinet because we're talking, you know, instruments, okay? And so we change that. Now watch, I typed in clarinet here on this sheet. I'm coming down here and clicking and going back to my Word document. Look what happened. It changed the data. The series is now, the legend is, this is a, now the blue is going to be a clarinet. So we can come over here and do the same thing. Maybe I want to make this a tuba. And then this is going to be your uh, violin. Okay, so we have three instruments that we have here. And then I can go ahead and say we're going to say this is uh, third quarter, uh, first quarter sales, first quarter. And then I can come down here and say second quarter. You know, you get the you get the picture. I'm using the arrow keys, by the way, to move down between the cells. This is the column heading. This is your row. You can tab or use your arrow keys to move between the, each data point here, the cells that you have, or your data cell. So we'll say third quarter, and then we're going to do the fourth quarter, four quarter. Now what you can do is obviously change this data too. But before I do that, let's go and see what changes I've made and how they affect my document. I'm coming down here to the taskbar, click on it, and you'll see that now it says first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, clarinet, tuba, violin. So we have these things are changing as they're going on. I haven't, you know, look, I haven't done anything here on my new chart tools that have opened up as soon as I created a chart. What happens? Yes, I know. You're tired of hearing me say it, but I'm going to say it again. I get a new tab. I get the chart tools with these three tabs that I can use for that. Now, back over here, I can then make changes into the actual data points themselves. Because understand, these are a series of values, or these data points, that make up the data series. And so what you can do is go in and then make whatever changes you have, and then what happens is the uh, chart then reflects the data points that you see here.
So this is all simply uh, what's going on. Now, we're going to go ahead here and say, all right, I want to change this to say we sold 25 clarinets. I'm going to tab over to the tuba here. We sold uh, 10 tubas. They're kind of expensive. And we sold 15 violins. So now what happens when you come down over here and we click on the document too, you'll see something. All of a sudden, your uh, it's adjusted. Your vertical value axis is adjusted up because now 25 is the biggest amount that you have. And if you roll your mouse over, it will tell you the value. Clarinet sales for the first quarter were 25. So you can you know, make those changes. The tubas, 10, and here we have the violins for 15. Now, I can quickly come in here and just you know, toss in some numbers here as, as we need to and you know, make whatever changes we need to. And it's going to go ahead and make the changes that you see exactly like you saw. Well, that's nice, and that's, that's great. This is how you change the data, or you take the data, or you manipulate the data here. Then you can come back over here, and now once you have your chart in place, in this case, we have all the neat little stuff that we have here, you can now manipulate how the chart looks. So we have these capabilities, OK? Now, one thing that you'll also see, if I come down here, over here to the data, and let's say now I want to add some more data to this. Let's say I want to say uh, previous year. And I want to say that I had, um, the previous year I sold 100 clarinets. I sold, uh, you know, 23 tubas and 75. Watch this. Every time I do this, notice how this automatically adjusts. And now when I come down here, it's going to give me now even more data. Now you might say, well, wait a minute. Maybe I don't want the previous year data to show up. How can I fix that? Well, come over here and you'll notice that I can change what part of the data points or the data range merely by selecting and dragging this. Look how now previous year falls outside of the selected area. I come back to document two, bada bing, bada boom, it is no longer there. So you can choose which data in your source is now being utilized. So you can, you know, you can do just about anything you want with this, with that plotted uh, data range that you have. So those are some things that you can do. Now to modify the chart, obviously this is the design area that we can come in here. And let's say you're like, eh, eh this is not too much. Do I want to change the chart type? You can change it to a different uh, type. You can save it as now a new template, the formatting and layout. You can switch rows to columns. So when you click on this, you'll notice that now what it's showing is here is the total clarinet sales, and now these are the quarters are showing you um, different. So you're swapping the row and column data. So you can just simply click on that. You can, again, select the data. You can change that data range that we talked about here. You can edit the data, which then simply brings this up. Again, I went over here and clicked to the side here for the Microsoft Excel, and it will allow you to go over here and change the data for that particular chart. Then, of course, you have the chart layouts themselves. If I click on here, you'll see it says, OK, how do you want the, the data? Do you want to show it up as layout 1? You can you know, change it over here to layout 2, layout 3, different layouts that you have. You also, when you select the, you know, all these things, you can also ch select different style formats for the things you want. Maybe you want it more of a 3D style. So when you select on it, look at how it just changed instantaneously to this really sharp looking 3D style. Kind of nice, huh? So these are the styles of the design. Now I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Now look at layout itself. The layout allows you to then go do you know things from the format, the selection. You can insert objects into the chart. So I could add another pie chart in here. I can add a chart title. Um, right now I don't have one. Now I can say, well, I want a centered overlay title. Well, now I can come in here and say that these are Acme instrument sales. 
And so now I've added that, and then now it's got a nice title over the thing. Or I can say, well, you know what, I don't want any, and it'll remove it. Or I can bring it back into the centered uh, overlay table. So you can do different things like that. You can change the way the legends appear. Right now, these are the legends, clarinet, the quarter. You can show the legends at the right. You can show the legends at the top. You can show the legends at the left. You can do different things. So here's my legend right here. And so, you know, where do you want it to appear? The bottom, overlay it. Underlay it, more legend options. You can turn off the legend where all of a sudden that legend goes away. Or you can say, no, show the legend at the right and it'll appear right back there. You can change the way the axis is, the primary. Do you want to show the left to right axis? Do you want to show it without any of the labels? So if I take that off, notice now all of a sudden the labels go away for that. And say, no, 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 I do want to, uh, you know, I do want to show the left to right axis. So you can change the look and feel that you have. Then, there is analysis. Now this is kind of outside the uh, realm of really what we want to get into. You, we talk a little bit more again about this in the Excel series, but you can then show trend lines. You know, do you want to show a linear trend line? So when you do that, add a trend line based on the series for clarinet. So when I do that, you can see that the clarinet, the first quarter did well, second quarter went down, and then boy, it just kind of went down really bad. So you can, you know, turn the trend lines off or on. So these are some advanced things that we can do right here. Now if you want to, you can also come over here to the format itself and change the look and feel of everything from the, you know, the font for your, uh, your chart title. Do you want to add accents? Do you want to change the fill color of, of things? Do you want to change some quick styles and apply it to the text? You know, this is kind of thing. Let's go ahead and add a nice uh, gradient fill there for the chart title. And now when I put in Acme Instruments, again, selecting I now have a new title. So you can see how the charts allow you to come in and create these really cool things. Now, here's the neat thing. One last thing to show you, and this is something you do need to know for the exam. Let's say that instead of this, I want to bring in some bulk instrument sales that I have in an act, that I already have in a spreadsheet. Well, all I need to do is come over here. I've got my chart in Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel. I can come over here and let's say I want to open my bulk instrument sales. Now bulk instrument sales, I now notice I've opened up another spreadsheet down here. I'm going to come over here and I want to do bulk instrument sales and I want to say show what this looks like. I click and select We'll go ahead and just pick this information that I want to get. The clarinet, the trumpet, the violin, and get some uh, bulk instrument sales. Okay, some data here. I come up here and I click on copy. And you'll notice that as soon as I copy it, I get my little dancing ants, as I like to call them. It shows you that you've now copied this selection. All right. Now, watch this. I come back over here to my chart in Microsoft Office. And remember, here's the data that I have. If I come over here and I select over here in this corner, because I want to you know, come down and take over all this, I simply click on Paste. It pastes the content right in there. Look at that. Puts that content right in there. And then I simply come over here and check out what happened. Ah, you might say, well, now that looks pretty much the same. Oh, no, it isn't. Look at this clarinet, trumpet, not tuba, and violin. And now I've got one, two, three, four, five, and then I've got zero all the way up to 250. So the data has now changed based upon data that I brought in from an outside Excel source. Now the neat, neat, neat thing about this, and they might ask you to do this on the exam, is back over here, not only on the design and we have the layout and the things that we have here and even the formatting and all, all these kind of things that you have here. When you come over here to the chart and you have all the data and the things that you have, check this out. Get external data. If I want to, I can get data linked in from existing data sources, from Microsoft Access, I can get it from the web where I can get things like from a web page. I could get stock quotes that constantly come in and repopulate it. I can get it from text, other sources from, you know, things, and even existing connections that I have to external data sources. So if I already have Excel spreadsheets and things like that uh, available to me, it, it not a problem. Just come up here, click on external data, and, you know, start adding it in. Great stuff. 
that you can use when you're creating these charts in your Word 2007 diagrams. See, I told you it wouldn't be that scary when we start taking a look at charts.